Welcome Cancer to your in-depth year 2025 astrology forecast for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. I'm going to briefly outline how I'm going to structure the video. I'm going to take a look at the two eclipses in the latter part of 2024. They're very influential in the early months of the new year. I'm also going to share with you your solar return. This provides a backdrop energy for the whole 12 months and gives us a lot of important information. Now, Cancer, you're blessed with a unique piece of serendipity this year. Yes, Jupiter does join you on the 9th of July, but Mars, the planet of desire, moves back into your sign on the 6th of January through to the 18th of April. And that's going to help you, despite its early retrograde, to punch through with the things that you felt, feel very strongly about. We have a switch of nodal axis after 18 months on the 11th of January. The North Node, the point of destiny, inverses into your ninth house. Very much to do with exploration, independence, but knowledge. It's been a very strong area for you since 2012. I'm going to explore why that is for you and why this is incredibly important to this year's prospects. Now, there's a lot of chatter about the move of Neptune and Saturn this year. And they are going to move into a very prominent part of your situation, but it is a temporary visit. In the case of Neptune, it's for just under eight months and begins at the end of March, just after an incredibly potent solar eclipse. If you do want to reach for the stars, your creativity is certainly going to be blessed by Neptune. But Saturn is not at its best in the sign of Aries. If we think about it, Aries is very much about action and initiation. Saturn can be about resistance. What is the impact of these two planets coasting together through the end of May all the way to August? But also, once Jupiter moves into your sign on the 9th of, uh, of June, which is a glorious opportunity for the next year, we do have Uranus, the planet of surprises and disruption, moving into your delicate 12th house. Uranus also arcs back to Pluto in the deep transformational 8th house. This suggests that inside of you, right at the root of your being, there could be some very powerful developments, just at a time when Saturn and Neptune are asking you to stand in the limelight. That's a very complex set of influences. It's known as a grand minor trine. The, uh, it's also known as the magic triangle, and I'm going to unpack it all for you. Now, in September, two more eclipses accenting the ins and outs of your communication and your connection to others, which provide a very powerful backdrop through to the end of the year. I'm also going to share with you the summer solstice, which sees the sun arrive in your sign, but be challenged by Saturn and Neptune. As it ushers in Cardinal Quadrant 2, what does that mean this year? Also, your personal new moon of the 25th of June is also afflicted by the energies of Neptune. So I'm going to explore all of these themes for you, Cancer. Please stay with me. I'm astrologer Patrick Arundel. If you're new to my channel, it's lovely to have your company. If you have any thoughts, please share them. This is very much a community. If you're a returning visitor, it's great to have your company once more and all your uh, views and interactions are truly appreciated. About 50% of people who enjoy my videos regularly are yet to subscribe. If that's you, please help the channel to thrive. Click that sub button and also the bell notification symbol. Please take advantage of my unique year 2025 personal horoscope forecast promotion. If you order in 24, you'll get the rest of that year free. But in my special package of 30% off, you also get your life roadmap report. 
This will help you to understand the patterns that have played out in your life so far, get a much more intimate understanding of how these have played out and how you can work with them future forwards. But with your forecast as well, it's a fantastic amount of information, it's great value, totally unique for each person it's produced for. Please see the link below for more. If you'd like to talk to me personally, I am a consulting astrologer, please check out my testimonials below. I don't edit these, as they come in, I share as is. Relationships are incredibly important for us all. Whether we want one or not, we have one with ourselves, our neighbours, our friends, our family members and our colleagues. If you'd like your relationships to work better, but use the power of Western Tropical Astrology, check out Matchful.me. This app combines serious astrology with psychological profiling. It's not based on sun sign analysis. You can enjoy it by clicking on the link below and if you type in Patrick in the coupon form, you'll also get an additional discount. So Cancer, on the 18th of September, we have the first in the new eclipse series, a lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces. But it's very close to Neptune, a shimmering mesmeric energy, which has probably been very profoundly impactful upon you since 2012. It could have had a big impact upon you in terms of the things you've read and explored, in terms of the spiritual dimension, but also in terms of travel. You may have gone to places that are a little bit off the beaten track, immersed yourself in the culture, philosophy, and just the overall atmosphere of those places in such an enriching way. If you have got a talent for photography, for film, for art, for music, it's probably been emphasised by Neptune since 2012. But this particular eclipse, as you go into the new year, is asking you to just check out some of the things that have been fascinating you to ensure that they're really worthy of how you feel now. And I'm going to explain how the planets are going to give you support in doing that. But also on the 2nd of October, we have a solar eclipse. This is the last in a series in Libra, but it's very close to Mercury, the planet of communication. But Mercury's influence of the other sign it rules of Virgo is very much to do with crisp, dry analysis. And I feel that you're being asked to think about where you live in a very careful way as you make your way through the last months of 24, but also through the first three or four months of the new year. Because feeling comfortable in our home environment, our connections to the people around us, our family relationships working well, but also our relationship with ourself. That's the most important relationship of all. And the fourth house where this occurs in the host sign of Libra is a bit more logical. It is about balance, but it's also in some ways with Mercury there asking you to be more interactive because... I feel one of the Cancerian traits that you have is that you can be so protective that does uh, choke off sometimes discussion. So if you do feel that you need to open up with trusted confidence, the combination of these two eclipses, which come from different series but can complement one another, is asking you to use knowledge, use your instincts, the lunar eclipse, but apply it to what makes you feel safe, nurtured, and assured and protected, which is the solar eclipse. I do feel that some Cancerian people, therefore, could be moving this year. And that's uh, something that can be partly triggered by the solar eclipse, but it could be uh, to do also with a need for space or extra stimulation in terms of your immediate environment and surroundings. Now, at the turn of the year, we get the solar return. And I'm sharing that on the screen now. As always, it's important from your perspective to think of your ruler, the moon. The moon combined with the sun just as 24 came to a close with a new moon on the 30th of December. This provides a backdrop for the following month. So the first four weeks of the new year suggests that relationships are going to be a big part of the story. 
but the moon in the seventh house at the turn of the year suggests your listening skills and your ability to attune to other people and be supportive but also at the same time let people know what you need can actually be a big part of the of the journey the problem with the moon in the seventh house is it can make us a little bit too availing to other people's viewpoints and we can lose our own identity a little bit. So do guard against that. But essentially it sees you looking for harmony, balance and equilibrium in all sorts of close relationships throughout year 2025. So that's very, very helpful to you. What are the other factors in the chart? Well, it's always important to look at the, uh, the uh, planet or the marker that's in the most prominent location. And this year for you, that's the North Node. Now, ironically, the North Node's about to switch out of the sign of Aries on the 11th of January. But here you can see it forges a formidable link with Mars, the planet of desire, and Pluto, the planet of truth, transformation, but also consequences. Now they go across your second eighth house axis. The chances are with those two opposite one another, your determination to improve your lot financially could be incredible this year. And with the North Node right at the top of your chart, that's suggesting that your instincts around professional affairs will be very important to your progress. So don't Double guess yourself. If you get that hunch, it is important to listen to it. The other thing about Mars opposite Pluto across the second and eighth houses is it could surprise you by how amorous you feel at times this year or how you attract someone to you who finds you very alluring. Now, right at the end of last year, on the 24th of December, we had an exact right angle between Saturn, the planet of of structure but of limitation and also Jupiter the planet of growth. If we go back to late May 2024 Jupiter has been occupying the part of your situation which is very much to do with the spiritual domain. Jupiter rules Pisces so having Neptune in Pisces since 2012 is rather redolent of some of the energy that Jupiter has been creating for you. It's been asking you to think a lot about your deeper motivations. If you've had moments where you've wanted to be a bit free of other people, cocoon yourself away in some very secluded or quiet spots wouldn't be a surprise. But if you look at the position of Saturn, it's in House 9. House 9 is very outgoing. It's to do with knowledge, but it can also be to do with contracts and legal matters and travel. If you're wanting to travel throughout 2025, or you are uh, considering undertaking some kind of uh, interactive situation where information will be tested, you must have very realistic expectations. And the reason for that cancer is Jupiter's opposed by Mercury. Mercury in Sagittarius does not do details, but it's actually in your sixth house, which is wanting detail. So what Jupiter can do is expand your spiritual consciousness, but Mercury doesn't really work in Sagittarius for grappling with those details. So you could find yourself going into to battle over a situation which may not be in your best interest. So if there is something that you're wanting to confront, uh, and it may be uh, something that it feels very, very important to you, and it may be a point of principle. It will be vitally important that you get professional support and make sure you micro-analyze all the information and don't make assumptions because Jupiter opposite Mercury can skew our reality, make us over overconfident, to be honest. You also have Venus in your eighth house along with Pluto. You could benefit... Uh, financially this year from a partner's uh, uh, fortune or if you are a business person this also can be very positive but it squares up with Uranus. If you do attract the attentions of someone who's really keen on you one of the things that may 
uh, attract you into the situation or not is if they can understand your need for space. If they don't, it could see you reinforce your need for independence. But also romantically, if you are in a relationship at the start of the year, but over time you don't necessarily feel it's got a long-term future, Venus square in Uranus could see you want to break free. But conversely, there could be a fling or an attraction with someone in your social circle this year. Whether it would be long-lasting or not is really down to you. But I feel the desire side of your nature is certainly very strong with Mars opposite Pluto. And the connection energy that comes from the new moon at the start of this year is very potent. So finding those connections, that sweet spot in all sorts of ways, whether it's with friends, whether it's with colleagues, or whether it is to do with one special person, is going to be part of this year's journey. But at the same time, you don't want to give away your power, and that's where Venus squaring Uranus could actually be an asset to you. Now I mentioned that Mars moves into your sign again on the 6th of January. This is because of the retrograde. The retrograde goes on through to the 24th of February, but Mars is going to be with you through to the 18th of April. If there's something that you feel very, very strongly about, and you're very driven towards a particular goal or target, what Mars can do, despite its retrograde, is give you a singularity of purpose which can be very helpful to you. But equally, it's important to understand that because Mars is in a, a retrograde and in your sign he's not at his best, that there may be times when you could get a little bit frustrated if things don't go quite at the pace you want. But that brings us to that true nodal axis, inverting into the signs of Pisces for North and Virgo for South on the 11th of January. This mirrors the new eclipse series which began on the 18th of September. So what you're being asked to do over the next year and a half, with the help of the point of destiny, the North Node, is listen to your instincts in terms of the things which really connect to you as being very meaningful, as being a point of truth that really chimes. It's a very subtle influence, the North Node. It's an intersection, of course, but this is very, very important because Neptune has been fabulously inspirational for you since 2012, but I feel Saturn's really been checking the validity of some of your interests the last couple of years, and you may have even become a little bit uh, disenchanted with some of the things you were doing before. But now what the North Node can do is help you to restore the faith in the things that are truly important to you. And one of the things you can gain from, definitely travel, but most certainly information and knowledge. So the more you can inform yourself, the better decisions you will make. Now we've got a big uh, energy building up from the beginning of February in the sign of of Aries. It begins with Venus. Don't underestimate how your personality power can be important for your connections to other people as you go into this new year. Also that passion that Mars is giving you as well can see you punch through obstacles. But Venus is going to be going into a retrograde, but it is augmented by Mercury early in March. But Mercury itself goes into a retrograde too. So even if you do try to apply for a new job, or there's some kind of exciting business idea you have, it could all be a bit choppy. And we do have on the 14th of March, a lunar eclipse in the precise sign of Virgo. Now this mirrors the first of the lunar eclipse, if you recall, which occurred on the 18th of September. This mirror, therefore, is asking you to think about how you exchange information. Cancer people, because you can be very perceptive, but also like the moon card in tarot, your perceptions at times can get overloaded. So it can be difficult to detach yourself a little bit. So what the third ninth house axis of this new eclipse series is saying to you is check information but try and be use the virgo energy to be more analytical try to weigh up 
what the relative benefits of things are. Because Neptune may, rightly or wrongly, have seen you trip the like fantastic in the most magical of ways since 2012. But now you need to really be engaging with people. And if you get your facts really straight, that's going to be such an asset to you. Now we do have on the 20th of March, the first of the cardinal quadrants. The sun returns to the sign of Aries and it's the beginning of the western tropical astrological year. For you, the sun therefore has moved to the peak of your chart. But it's very, very close to Venus and also to Mercury. But then on the 29th, we have the solar eclipse. And this solar eclipse is going to give you an opportunity to really shoot for the stars if you've got a clear plan about the role or ambition that's important to you. But not everybody wants to be a captain of industry. Your interest may be in terms of volunteering locally. It could be to do with your grandchildren. It could be to do with a hobby or interest. But wherever you have a burning passion, it can be supercharged by that solar eclipse. But then on the 30th of March, Neptune, the shimmering energies of Neptune, moves into Aries where it's going to be for just under eight months. Now it's going to be joined by Saturn on the 25th of May. The two together is something I need to break down for you. Neptune in Aries means the fire energy of Aries infuses the more watery and dispersing and sometimes eroding energies of Neptune. Neptune goes through a 164 year cycle so it's 163 years this year it comes back into your 10th house next year but if you are a creative if you're an imaginative person and you can showcase your ideas in a dazzling mesmerizing way the next eight months is definitely a huge opportunity. But just remember when Saturn joins up with Neptune, it can create some obstacles because it's in its fall in the sign of Aries. So it's not its best location. Aries is about initiation, thrust, excitement, drama, going for it, foot to the floor. And Saturn is none of those things. It's about steady, application over a period of time but Saturn is also the planet of fate and if you've been working patiently over a long period of time to try to elevate your talents and reach a new audience whether it is a fresh opportunity professionally or with a creative strand or it is in terms of starting your own business Saturn's going to ask you to apply the creativity, imagination and sensitivity of Neptune in a very systematic way. So they're not necessarily a panacea. Now they do link back to Pluto, but Pluto for you is in your 8th house, very deep transformations. The 8th house can be about life and death. Pluto is also the planet of, of, of rebirth. It's possible, therefore, that something when Pluto was working through the sign of Capricorn to do with a relationship did come to a big, powerful end. But you may still be working through what happened. For example, if you've lost somebody in recent years, Pluto in the eighth house may suggest that there's still some mourning to do. But in a more practical, pragmatic way, Pluto is about shared resources, long-term investments. So it's possible that Pluto linking back to Neptune and Saturn can see something structurally shaping up, which could see you getting the funds in order to push forwards with those big goals and hopes that Saturn and Neptune are helping you to enable. But we have the arrival of Jupiter in your sign on the 9th of June. That's definitely something to appreciate. For you, Jupiter going through house 12, I think has had its benefits. But I feel here it's exalted and loves being in Cancer. And it gives you a chance to use your self-belief and confidence to supercharge things even more. Remember, Mars was helping you in the early part of the year, so you get another opportunity. But on the 
20th of June we have the second of the cardinal quadrants with the summer solstice. The sun moves into your sign, that's ordinarily a brilliant window of opportunity for the following 13 weeks to really get anything to do with home, emotion and family working sweetly but it's squared off with Saturn and Neptune. So you may not get that sense of uplift, which is often the case. But on the 25th, the new moon in your sign is also squaring up with Neptune in particular. So anything that you're trying to do as an individual still has to work with your desire that Saturn and Neptune may be creating to connect or build into some kind of structure or reach an audience and that may require you in some ways to uh, fit in with what's expected whereas the new moon wants you to actualize your individuality so it's going to be a little bit of a, of a, a struggle I feel to get it all balanced up with Uranus also going into your 12th house on the 7th of July it's dazzling angle to Pluto is, is stunning. It's great for unlocking much more psychological awareness. But if your work requires you to be implacably stable and steady and steadfast in the public eye, that angle between Uranus and Pluto could be unsettling. Which brings us to September and those two eclipses. First of all, on the 1st of September, Saturn returns to Pisces. Now that could in some ways be a little bit of a relief if the unrelenting uh, uh, attention that Saturn has been creating in the most visible part of your chart has proved somewhat uncomfortable. And on the 6th, Uranus goes retrograde. So on September the 7th, the lunar eclipse in Pisces, very close to the North Node, this is an opportunity to really try to use information to clarify your emotional uh, situation. But September the 21st sees the solar eclipse in Virgo, which for you is very much about quick uh, everyday uh, communication, the third house, but it's opposite the stern, cool Saturn. If there is something that needs to be discussed, which is proven to be a little bit tricky, maybe over that contractual matter that I mentioned at the start of the year, the following months from September the 21st could be a little tense. We do have the autonomous equinox on September the 22nd asking you again to get in touch with anything to do with your need for security, peace and tranquility. The 22nd of October sees Neptune uh, retrograding back into Pisces. So both Saturn and Neptune have returned home. And then on the 8th of November, it's Uranus's turn to return back to the sign of Taurus. So it's a very, very complex year, very, very interesting. If you're somebody who's got a big goal, a big objective, and is very sure of what you want to achieve, the imagination of Neptune and the structural energies of Saturn, together with your drive and enthusiasm, which certainly can come from Mars priming you up early in the year, Jupiter priming you up later in the year, but also perhaps revisiting some of the ideas and perceptions that have shaped up in recent years and clarifying them a bit more, perhaps updating some knowledge, perhaps challenging yourself about some of the beliefs that have been guiding you. And you can use that North Node in such a wonderful way to guide you positively forwards. But I feel that this is a year when you will be required to interact and communicate with others much more uh, frequently and if you are someone who tends to be a little bit resistant to that it's asking you therefore to step outside your comfort zone but be assured that solar return with the moon in the seventh house will give you the diplomacy and the skills to connect with people as long as you don't try too hard with that Mars opposite Pluto right at the start of the year and also I should say on the 15th of June as Jupiter in your sign squares with Saturn in Aries, that too is a once in a seven year event. So we had two of them last year, 
one this year and that's just asking you to make sure that any growth ideas you have are moderated with an understanding of the responsibilities and obligations that come with that. I hope you have a fabulous year 2025. Take care and goodbye.